everybody. How's it going? Welcome back to Pro Mix Academy. Glenn Fricker here, uh, your resident Reaper guy. And uh, today we're going to take a look at one of my absolute favorite plugins built into Reaper, and that is the delay module. And this thing is great. I use this on vocals. I use this on guitar solos, that kind of thing. It's kind of been one of my favorite plugins because it's dead simple to use, and it's absolutely free. It's built right in. So uh, to put a delay on, a say, a lead guitar, we'll take a look here. We're still working with the track Scourge of the Earth. And uh, let's uh, solo this up. Now, just taking a look at the raw lead track here, in and out of the mix. It's a little dry sounding, so we're going to solo this up here. And as you can see, I've got a delay track set up already. We want to click on up here and uh, track insert. Click on that, and we're going to get a whole list here. We'll just look up delay. So I got a whole bunch of delays here, but we're going to go with the Rhea delay because this is built into Reaper. And like I said, this is one of my absolute favorite plugins. And it, what it's going to give us is a wet and dry control and a number of taps. And what I like to do is a stereo ping ponging kind of thing. Well, we've got, we've got controls here in terms of uh, time in milliseconds and uh, musical length, and then feedback controls how many, how much times uh, things are going to regenerate. So we're going to start out with a mono delay first, and uh, to get that going on this lead, we're going to set this up as kind of a delay bus. So we're going to grab our track sound here and send it right to the delay here. And yeah, we want this pre fader. So this is going to get sent before the signal hits this fade here. So we can turn this up and down. We'll be controlling the delay independently. So let's just take a quick listen here. And you just hear that echo going on and up. And so if I want to pan this over, give it a little bit of space. Now we're the one thing is you'll notice when we when we click this delay on the 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 sound of the lead actually gets louder and why is that? We bring this on. What's going on? Well, see, we've got wet and dry. Wet is going to be the amount of the delay that we're hearing. And the dry control is the original signal, so we're going to pull the dry control down. There we go. That's actually starting to sound like an echo. Now, if you listen to that ending, you know, it's like, um, yeah, it kind of ends a little bit. No, if we had a little bit of feedback, that's just going to stretch that out a long, long, long way. Take a listen to this. Now, usually when I'm doing delay to guitars and vocals and that kind of thing, um, I set things to a length of musical time and not to milliseconds. I find it just works better rhythmically to have everything kind of in lockstep. So if you've tracked everything to a, a metronome, if you've laid out a tempo map and whatnot, um, you should have no problem at all. In this case, we are... You got a uh, tempo of 151 BPM. So let's try this, uh, set the delay length to, let's go eight eighth notes. This will stretch things out completely. Let's take a listen to that, how much of a difference that makes. And if we go to 12, Remember, everything's based on fours in music. Well, especially in a four-four time signature. So here are twelve eighth notes. So that's uh, what that three-quarter notes. That's pretty neat. And if we, if we go to sixteen, that should be like a, a whole note behind in terms of rhythm. I'm gonna let this play a little bit longer. What's also great is we've got something, we've got a high pass filter here. What that'll let us do, if you haven't watched my uh, tutorial on Reaper EQs, I suggest watching this first. But what we can do is we can dump all the low frequencies out of that echo and just keep the mix clean. So 
So when we're stacking tracks on top of each other, we don't have to worry about the bottom end uh, loading up. And um, what happens if we take the bit rate down? Let's take this down to like eight bits. This is gonna like just kill the quality. This should be pretty interesting actually. Oh, let's go to like three bits, see what we get. Wow, that's actually pretty neat. I've never used that before. That's kind of a neat control. I'm going to have to try putting that into a, a mix somewhere. I remember tracking, like, back in the 90s, I was doing Foley work for a video game, and we recorded everything in 8-bit, and there was just, like, no room for any errors whatsoever. So let's take a listen to that with, like, 6-bits. Let's move this uh, to, say, like, 4 eighth notes. See what we get here. Yeah, that's pretty funky. I, I mean, like, I don't know where I would ever actually use that, but still kind of neat. So let's pan that over, and we're going to get a ping-ponging effect now. We're going to take all these c controls. Uh, we just pan that over to the left. And we're going to bring the feedback down to about, eh, about 18 dB, somewhere right around there. So it's not going on forever. And we're going to add a tap. And basically, it copies all the controls. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pan this tap over here. This should go right back to dead center again. And what we're going to do is we're just going to change the time of the second tap slightly. Take a listen to this. Now we get like a stereo effect. If we don't want that as wide, we're going to put this to about uh, 70% either way. So this will stay out of the way of the guitars that are fully panned out. And we get, still get something cool. Now let's take a listen to that in context of the mix. Bring this in now. And we can change the amount of delay going to that to that uh, to that delay bus just by the uh, by the send control. And if you watch my video on using automation, I explain how we can control that, move it up and down, and have all kinds of fun with that. Uh, you can use the delay for vocals as well. I mean, like we've got that delay set up for a rhythmic uh, kind of thing, so it might actually work on the vocal track. Let's take a quick peek here, see what we get. And what I'm going to do is um, I had a different effect set up for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send that to the delay right here and see what we get. Let's turn that down a little. That's a little much. I usually like delay on vocals, but I find in this case it's maybe a little bit too long of a delay. So let's set that for two Eighth notes, see what you get, and uh, we're just going to do a slight adjustment there. And blinded from what looms. Your life and your soul has fallen under control. Naive of danger lurking down deep below. That's pretty cool. Like that. You think you've got my back up against the wall. Like a to crawl. Cool. All right. There we go. That's kind of a neat little slop effect. So there you go. There's a basic look at working with delay in Reaper. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, don't forget to check out my free downloads. I've got my ebook, got my cheat sheet, and then I've got my premium lessons, which are several hours long, which will take you through the whole process of mixing metal. I've got a prog metal lesson. I've got some phonic folk metal, and I've even got math rock. So uh, definitely uh, check those out as well. They can all be found on Pro Mix Academy. Follow the links in the description below. Take it easy.